It's not as bad as it sounds. My friends are obsessed with my proposal. I think. My, 32 female, fiancé Peter, 30 male, had arranged a candlelit dinner in a hotel room. There were flowers, rose petals and music. There was my favourite dinner and my favourite dessert. Peter was in a tuxedo. I was wearing a dress. That evening was so amazing. While I was eating, my stomach started acting up. I ran to the bathroom. It was mortifying, but at least I was comfortable enough with Peter to allow him to come in. I apologised for ruining our evening while I was on the toilet, and he said it was okay. I felt like he wanted to ask me to marry him the whole evening. I told him I love him, and he said I love you too. I told him, I'm sure you'll take care of me in sickness and in health. That comment made Peter smile, and he got down on one knee. I didn't care that this was the situation. I was so happy to say yes. I felt like he wouldn't have asked that evening if I hadn't said the in sickness and in health comment. I told my best friend Kate, 33 female, and another friend Bailey, 33 female. I told them the truth. Kate said it was weird, creepy, and an idiot move on his part. I explained that he likely would have put it off if I didn't make the health comment. Kate said I was desperate and that I should have some respect for myself. Bailey said if I thought Peter would ask another time, then I should have let him ask another time. Before talking to them, I thought I had the sweetest proposal story. Now I feel like an idiot who caused my amazing fiancé to have a terrible story. Am I the idiot? Girlie, this is such a cute proposal. This proposal shows he planned it, he was ready, but he recognized the need to shift gears without making you feel guilty. Some people forget that marriage is more than a perfect proposal. You can post photos of it on Instagram and it's more than a perfect showy wedding that is sure to impress. Your marriage is about you and your future husband building a life together, having someone you know will have your back through thick and thin, your teammate. Any man who can turn an IBS flare-up into a happy moment is a keeper in my book. I wish you two a very long and happy life together. You're definitely not the idiot. A lot of women have very rigid ideas about what's romantic. Don't listen to them. I was once told by a female co-worker that it was terrible my boyfriend had gotten me a car battery for Christmas. It was what I'd asked for since I hate dealing with car stuff. He even installed it for me. After I explained this, she told me I was wrong to have wanted this. We never talked much after that. Your story sounds very sweet to me, and your fiancé sounds like the guy who'll stick with you when things are crappy. Sorry, couldn't resist. Mine stuck with me through cancer, by the way. That's way more important than a bunch of lacy hearts and flowers crap. OP, he's a total keeper and loves all of you. This is a total testament to it. Don't let people with outdated ideas of love ruin that for you. Congratulations and here's to a happy, long, loving marriage. Update, the proposal happened on Saturday and I'd been holding off telling my parents and Peter's parents. Both sets of parents live in a different state. Tonight, we told my parents first via video chat. My parents are Bob, 58 male, and Susan, 58 female. My mom is a massive fan of romance and I knew she would ask about the proposal. Peter and I told my parents the whole proposal story. My mom was over the moon. She said proposing like that was better than any idea she had. My dad said it just proves the love Peter has for me. My mom asked if she could tell others and I said sure. I asked my mom to be my maid of honour. After getting engaged, my pick for maid of honour was either Kate or my mom. I didn't pick my mom to spite Kate. I'm not punishing Kate. Kate's initial reaction to the proposal story would just make her being the maid of honour awkward. Plus, my mom is so happy with our union and she would love to plan a wedding. Then we told Peter's parents via video chat. His parents are Chuck, 55 male, and Linda, 59 female. His parents really appreciated the comedy. Chuck thanked us for giving them the gift of telling that amazing story if we're comfortable with that. I told him we were confused. Linda said she was so happy for us. Peter told his father that he wanted him to be the best man. Lastly, we told Peter's sister Juliana, 27, via video chat as she lives in the state. She had her father's sense of humour. I hope Kate and Bailey will be bridesmaids. Yes, Kate and Bailey are single. I've been best friends with Kate since the ninth grade, so this little disagreement wouldn't ruin our friendship. Further update. Kate and Bailey both agreed to be bridesmaids when I asked via message. Kate apologised via message and she also sent me a video of her apologising. Kate said she appreciated that I still let her be a key part of the wedding. After several days of thinking about the proposal, she realised how loving it was. She said if she had IBS, she would appreciate a guy who treats her like how Peter treats me. Bailey apologised via message. 
Her apology was brief and she admitted in it that Kate told her to apologise. Who cares what Kate thinks? She's not the one marrying your kind and supportive man. I'd keep Bailey and lose Kate. She admitted she only apologised because she was told to, so she's really not your friend and she doesn't think that this was cute. Almost everyone I knew with the showiest proposals is divorced. The only ones who randomly eloped or had some story only they could understand are still solid a decade later. I'm not saying this is always the case, but it happened enough to make me think. On Monday, my son called me from the nurse's office and asked if I could bring him a clean shirt. I asked why, and he said his shirt was covered in blood. He's been getting random nosebleeds ever since he had to pull his dead stepdad from the waves after he suffered a heart attack. That, combined with starting middle school, hitting puberty, and not getting along with his mom, has caused him a great deal of stress. I went to his school and asked if he'd rather just go home, and he said no because they were going to play dodgeball at PE. I said okay. On Tuesday, I got an email from his teacher, Mrs. S, saying that Frankie was assigned detention for not getting a hall pass to go to the bathroom. I asked her to call me because I didn't understand. We spoke and she said Frankie didn't show up for class on Monday. I said yes because he had a massive nosebleed on his way to your class and went to the bathroom to get tissues. It wouldn't stop bleeding so he went to the nurse. She said he should have gone to class first and then gotten a pass. I said your class is on the other side of where he was when he started bleeding. Are you saying he should have walked while bleeding to your class to get a pass and then walked to the bathroom and then back to your class, still bleeding, for another pass to go to the nurse and then walk to the other side of campus? That's a lot of activity and blood. She said students can't decide if they're not going to class and she needs to know where they are. I said you did when the nurse called you and I don't disagree that you need to know where your students are. However, this wasn't like my kid ditched class to commit bank robbery. I said I'd talk to him and make this clear, but please nix this detention nonsense. A warning, okay? Detention? Overkill for this situation. She said no. I said, well, he's not doing it, so... Yesterday, Frankie and I met with the vice principal regarding his nosebleeds. The vice principal was more concerned that we were getting help and to let Frankie know that he cared. I mentioned the detention thing to the vice principal and he said he would handle it and thought it was insane to punish a kid for getting medical help. He agreed that my kid wasn't trying to avoid class and that better communication was needed. As I was leaving, we ran into Mrs. S and I told her we had a meeting with the vice principal. Just like I told you, my son isn't serving detention over a nosebleed. She didn't say anything but went to the VP's office and I understand she was there for a minute because they had another teacher sub her class. This morning, the VP called me and said that he wished I hadn't said anything. I said, well, I wish Mrs. S was more reasonable and didn't start this whole thing. And for the record, I'm not some soft dad who lets his kids do whatever they want. Your dick at her at the end was super unnecessary and unhelpful, and it made a headache for the person you'd escalated to who was helping you. Was your desire to rub her nose in your righteousness just so significant you couldn't help yourself? It's kind of mind-boggling to me. You'd gotten your way and you needed to move on. Not to mention your kid presumably still has this person as his teacher, and the best for him would be to let the principal handle it and not get into any more debates. I'll go, everyone's the idiot here, because while your general perspective here is right and you went to appropriate channels to resolve it, the conversation at the end was childish and created more problems. His dig at the end was entirely mild and it was incredibly unprofessional for the VP to phone him and say that in the first place. That teacher insisted a student with serious bleeding should go across the entire school, creating a biohazard, just to beg her for permission to seek medical treatment for a potentially serious condition. People will continue to abuse their power until they're called out and punished for it. The teacher doesn't get to throw a tantrum and punish a kid for doing what is appropriate. His dig was warranted. OP's not the idiot. My girlfriend, 24, and I, 25 male, became homeowners a year ago. My brother, 18, moved in with us after he finished high school in May so he could attend community college in our town. We'd planned this with him months in advance and we were both on board with the idea. He settled in well, has a job, started classes and made new friends. Now, my dad and his wife expected me to let my stepbrother, nearly adult, move in next year when he starts college. My dad wasn't informed of my brother's plan to live with me. My brother waited until May to tell him what was happening and my dad wasn't happy that I'd been talking to my brother about college and where he'd live but not my stepbrother. My dad and his wife married when I was 11 and my mom died when I was 9 so I lived with them. 
For that reason, my dad feels like my stepbrother isn't just a step-sibling, but a sibling, and should be given the same chance. I disagree, and I never thought of my stepbrother as a sibling. To me, my brother was always my only sibling. We were close, and I'd spend time with him when I could. I never did the same for my stepbrother, and haven't kept in touch since moving out. It just wasn't the same to me. I'm not close to my dad either, so it's just my brother, and now he lives with me. Anyway, I said no to my stepbrother staying with me and told them they need to figure out something else. Dad accused me of playing favourites and tried to berate me for it. I told him I was happy to have my brother live with me, but he was my only brother. I stopped taking their calls and ignored their texts, but there have been many from Dad and his wife saying I'm acting like an idiot. My stepbrother also asked why I didn't want to let him live with me, and he promised he'd work and help around the house like my brother. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. There's nothing wrong with you and your brother communicating and planning his move. I don't know if you have room for a second person coming in, but either way, it's your choice not to want that or to want that with someone over another person. These are personal choices that affect your daily life. Sounds like your dad is acting dumb in not having known how you're not as close with your stepbrother. Dad is insisting because that will save him money. Tell your father to man up and support his own children. Both of those boys are his responsibility, not yours. Ask him how many other fatherly responsibilities he's going to try to shove off on you. He's mad that you aren't supporting him as a brother, but he is actively trying to not support him as a father. Agreed, but I hope OP realizes stepbrother is a person with feelings of rejection and alienation too, and may even feel closer to OP's brother and even OP than vice versa. Don't be cruel in your rejection. Have as much compassion as you can. You haven't said anything that indicates stepbrother is a golden child, a brat, or anything negative, really. Just that you're not close. And that's fair. Just be gentle. My brother married for the second time last year, and he and his wife blended their families. My brother has Sam, tween, and Amy, tween. His wife has Lily, tween, and Rosie, pre-tween. Sam and Amy don't have a relationship with their mom, and she hasn't seen them since Amy was six months old, which is her choice. Lily and Rosie's dad shows up every couple of years but has no custody time with them. According to what my sister-in-law has said, he's always gone super fast. Sam and Amy have been pretty meh about blending families. They're civil, but I don't think they care too much for my sister-in-law or Lily and Rosie. A few times, my brother and sister-in-law have mentioned that Sam and Amy still act like my brother is the only parent they have or that he's the only one they can ask for help with or go to with something. They don't ask sister-in-law at all, and they don't really interact with Lily or Rosie much. This hasn't changed in over a year of marriage. It hasn't changed since they moved in together two-ish years ago. My brother and sister-in-law have been aware of this. They're not in any kind of therapy and mostly have tried to do fun family things to strengthen bonds and relationships. They take two Saturdays or Sundays a month for family days out. Now, my sister-in-law is almost due with their first baby, and my brother and sister-in-law want the four kids to name the baby. The problem is that Sam and Amy have not contributed or given any opinion, and for months there has been no progress made. Sister-in-law mentioned that they were going to hold out until all the kids gave suggestions or opinions. My brother told me the other day that they haven't talked about names at all, that Sam and Amy are no closer to giving their input either, and how he expects the baby could be months old without a name. I told him he was crazy about that. Maybe I should have kept that to myself, but I was so shocked. I told him it was such a bad idea not to pick a name for the baby because Sam and Amy might never chime in, and the new baby needs a name and deserves to have one. My brother got angry with me and told me I shouldn't interfere in his household, and who am I to call him crazy when I only just became a dad and don't have any older kids? Am I the idiot? You are the idiot. I honestly agree with you that not giving the baby a name for so long sucks, and to be real, I probably would have done the same thing as you did. But I don't really think it's your place to try to make that decision. Your brother and sister-in-law need to do more to get Sam and Amy's opinions faster, though. Our firstborn is lucky she still isn't called The Baby. None of our three children's names were written in stone until I was in the hospital about to give birth. My husband and I just couldn't agree on any. At least we didn't have interfering relatives who also wanted a say. Brother is right. You should stay out of it. Babies don't need to be named the second they're born. Some cultures don't even name babies right away. Even in the US, you have a little bit of time before you need to submit the name. I don't think this is going to be a popular answer, but not the idiot. Yeah, this isn't any of your business, 
And you don't necessarily need a name picked out right away. I recognise that. But you know what? This method of naming the child is utterly preposterous and someone needs to tell the parents about it. It's actually insane that the parents are forcing all their children, none of which are even pre-tweens, to have input on their child while taking zero initiative themselves. Unfortunately, I don't think there's anything else you can do about this, but I don't think you're the idiot for calling out how loony tunes this is. I'm going to assume the parents are expecting that if the kids name the baby, they'll be more attached to it and thus create the perfect blended family. As opposed to understanding why the children don't care about naming the baby, because they feel no attachment. Yeah, this is going to work out really well. About a week ago, I was planning to buy a new laptop for myself. I was browsing local stores' websites in my country, trying to figure out what I wanted. While I was doing this, my uncle was over for lunch with the family. He overheard me talking about buying a laptop. He offered to get one for me at a lower price because he knows people, whatever that means. I was surprised because I know he's not very tech-savvy, but I figured there was no harm in hearing him out. I gave him just a few requirements. Not an Apple product, at least 32 gigabytes of RAM, a keyboard layout from our country, preferably no operating system pre-installed. I told him all of this and expected him to note it down, but he didn't seem to. I also mentioned my budget. A few days later, he calls and says he got the laptop. This was unexpected because I hadn't given him any money yet, but okay, I thought, let's see. And what does he bring? A MacBook with 8 gigabytes of RAM. He explained that Macs are much better and that I should just use it. Since I'm a 20-year-old female, I guess he assumed I didn't know what I was talking about. I politely declined, telling him it wasn't what I wanted. Now my uncle is angry at me for not paying him, and my parents are also upset, saying I should just accept it. So am I really the idiot here? Not the idiot. Uh-huh. He knows people. Does anyone else get the vibe that uncle was just trying to offload a stolen laptop for some quick cash? Your parents are wrong to pressure you, but of course they will side with the uncle because parents often worry about alienating family members while taking their children's affection for granted. I'm curious, was it in a sealed new box? And was he asking less than the official price? As others have said, if he's not tech-savvy and knows people, the laptop is probably of dubious provenance. Plus, it sounds used. I can't remember the last time a MacBook came with only 8 gigabytes of RAM. He can return it or sell it. You are not obligated to pay for something you literally cannot use. Ugh. Reminds me of something that happened to me. My ex and I were visiting her mom and her mom had just got a new phone and offered to sell her old one to me. I said, no thanks, I don't want it. I was very clear I didn't want that phone because, frankly, it was a crappy phone. I didn't use those exact words. And then my freaking ex bought it off her and gave it to me as a Christmas present, right in front of her mom and stepdad. I was so angry, but of course I had to smile and accept the darn thing. OP, you gave the specs. He didn't listen throw the thing in the garbage and be done with it, lol.